In today's video, I want to take you guys along for a little photo shoot I did in New York City during the pandemic of 2020. Uh, hopefully, that's all that this year is going to be remembered for. I, I figured since everyone is locked up in their house, uh, it's a great opportunity to take some pictures in Times Square and, and also in Central Park without all the usual crowds. Uh, for the pictures, I used the Sony A6600 camera uh, because it's small and it takes uh, really good looking 24 megapixel photos. Uh, for the lenses, I used the Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens uh, along with the other great uh, Sigma lens, which is the 30mm f1.4. Uh, plus, for the super wide angle shots, I had the Laowa 9mm lens. In order to get a shallow depth of field, I also had to use an ND filter. The one I used is from Polar Pro. Uh, it's the base cam kit that comes with a very light but sturdy mud packs that you can attach directly to the lens. This means you don't need rails and that keeps the whole camera setup nice and small. This is also what I've been using over the last few months on most of my video cameras. Uh, the kit comes with a 2 to 5 stop variable ND filter and a polarizer filter. This allows you to just turn the polarizer to quickly adjust the intensity of the ND. The Matpax even has a top flag that helps control lens flares. Uh, this whole setup works great for both video and still photography. In all of these shots, I did use a light. Uh, it was actually a pretty simple setup with a large softbox. This is a really cheap kit that I bought online uh, that has two on-camera flash speed lights. Uh, these come with a little stand and an adapter that holds the lights and the softbox. On my camera, I mount the wireless flash trigger, so whenever I click the shutter button, that sends the signal to the lights, causing them to flash. Uh, I can also adjust the intensity of the flash using the remote trigger. Uh, whenever you're working with a single light setup like this for portraits, uh, always place the light above the model's head, uh, kind of pointing down straight onto her face, so it creates these even and soft shadows under the nose and jawline. In this kind of a setup, you want to make sure that your assistant knows what you are trying to do, uh, so you need to communicate with him and tell him to move in closer or further, uh, higher or lower, so that you always end up with those subtle shadows. You don't want that light too high, for example, because it will create those long and bad looking shadows. Uh, also, if the light is too far away, uh, the shadows will look too sharp. Since I want to create casual looking portraits, I want the face to be lit softly. Uh, you also have to communicate with your model so she knows how to pose. Uh, in this case, I'm working with Annie, with whom I've done a lot of photos in the past. Uh, so we already know what each of us likes and how often, for example, we'll change up the poses. Uh, also, don't forget to just have fun as you experiment and try out angles or different poses that uh, might seem stupid even, uh, or sometimes if, if something maybe that you've never really tried before. Uh, in the worst case scenario, if that photo doesn't look good, you just simply don't end up using it. In a situation like this, where you're basically just experimenting, it's always best to shoot more photos than less. This gives you more options later on when you adjust the photos on your computer, uh, which I will show you how I do next. So now I'm going to go and pick basically all my favorite photos from the shoot uh, and do all of my kind of you know final touch-ups to, uh, to, to make them ready for printing. Uh, I'm going to do all the work in Luminar 4. It's a really cool software that I started using uh, about a month ago. And I've just fallen in love with it because it makes basically photo retouching super easy and super fast because it uses AI, actual artificial uh, t t intelligence. But anyways, I'll kind of show you guys how it works within the program. Uh, so here, really what I got first is I just basically imported all of my photos. So we got almost uh, 289 photos in this photo shoot. Um, and I'm just going to go basically through each one of them and you know, pick like the, the winners and the losers. So the way I kind of work with it is uh, I go through it and I give it a star rating. So for, for whatever photos I don't like, I'll basically give it a zero stars. But you see like the first one here is, was a test shot out of focus. So obviously I won't give it a star. This one, for example, um, you know, I might like this shot. So I give it one star. So just press one here on my laptop. And that's kind of how I go. So if I f feel like the shot looks good, you know, then then I'll, I'll give it a a star, and then basically what happens after that is um, pick like you know the the best ones of those ones by you know then uh, only looking at uh, up here you can click for example showing uh, for example one star or more. So if I click that right now, I only pick these, and then kind of go would go through here, and then let's say I'm like okay, oh, I really like maybe this one, so I would give it two stars, and that's kind of how you start slowly narrowing it down. Then again. 
you can go in uh, and then start, you know, to view only two stories or more and so on until you really want to narrow down, I would say, to, uh, you know, to as few photos as you can uh, and really pick the best of the best. So anyways, that's what I'm going to do now. Ooh, all right. So I went through all the photos and I narrowed it down to 48 photos from oh, oh, almost 300. So, uh, you know, again, just slowly process of elimination. I've got down to basically three stars now. Um, and now I'm going to basically just go and start adjusting these photos. And uh, here I'm going to show you how really easy and, and fast and just really how cool it is working with uh, with this new software, Luminar 4. Uh, or at least new to me. Uh, like I said, uh, I've only been working with this for a month. Uh, anyway, so first thing we're going to go here is like an edit here section. Uh, you have different here tools. So you have here your essentials, creative, portrait, and then you have like professional tools. Um, so first thing we're going to do is just kind of, you know, look at the AI enhance. And I pretty much just like, you know, go and jack it up all the way here to the right. 100% see what that does. And as you can see, it just overall kind of like adjusts the contrast. And it looks at, that's the cool thing about uh, the AI is that it actually looks at like the content of your photo. So it obviously will not increase the contrast or, or saturation and things like skin tones and, and, and certain other areas that it knows it's going to look bad. So as you can see, when I'm adjusting it here, it pretty much like automatically masks out here Annie from, from the foreground. Uh, and it does all these nice adjustments there to the, the background. So that, that's kind of cool about it. You can do the AI sky enhancer. So let's see. So you see kind of darkens the sky, makes it more saturated. So I'll put it maybe somewhere there. And I think the background, you know, usually I wouldn't put it at 100%. Maybe put it somewhere 50 But, you know, in this case, it actually looks pretty good. So, uh, And that's the cool thing is you're pretty much just working with sliders. Um, AI structure. So you see structure adds, it's sort of like mid-tone details, like when you're doing color grading. Uh, basically adjust the contrast, but only in the mid-tones. So you can see like without it, you see how like that, um, you know, the texture there on, on the ground is not as basically noticeable with it. You can see how right away it makes that pop. But again, if I, for example, see like put it all the way up, which I wouldn't want it to do, you know, all the way 100%, but you can see it does it all, but it does, doesn't does add those kind of nasty kind of, you could say, textures to her skin tone. So, you know, and then if you go in reverse, it will actually soften those areas, right? So I'm going to kind of, somewhere there, I think I like it. You can boost it too. So you can see that's kind of how it looks while boosting it. But uh, yeah, I don't think I need to do that. So right away, it looks pretty cool. Like if you look at the before and after, look at it. Like right away, it just makes the whole here Times Square kind of a lot brighter and just makes it pop more. So before and after makes the sky, I think, look better. And this is just by, you know, again, sliding these two sliders. So normally I'd be doing this way, way faster. Obviously, right now I'm talking to you guys, kind of trying to explain it. But uh, but like I said, normally that's how I would do it. Um, here, uh, you know, you have your traditional kind of things that you would find in, in programs like Lightroom, for example, where you can adjust overall, like the saturation and things like that, which right now I will not be doing any of that stuff. I pretty much usually just stick to like the AI features, and I find that they, they do a really good thing. So now the next thing I'm going to do is here in creative, you can actually do, I don't know if it makes sense to do it here, but I can try it. I can do sky replacement. So I can, for example, pick, I don't know, blue sky. And see there, it basically what it did is it puts these clouds there in between uh, the buildings. And what's cool about it is that it, it, it kind of takes into account, like for example, if there's reflections here in the building, you can see some of those clouds are reflecting in it. Uh, it, and it just blends it really well. Like that's another cool thing. You you can actually uh, like reposition the, the the sky, and you can do all the, all those other kind of things. But I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing that here. Let's see here. Sky global. So sky global basically it throws more of those colors into your foreground. So I can see now it's more visible in there in those reflections and things like that. Or as I put it all the way down, it's not as visible. I'll leave it somewhere there, maybe. Uh, let's see, maybe put it at around 20-something. Now, um, relight scene. Also, relight scene is what it basically will take the colors from that sky and will kind of add them a little bit here to our foreground. So in this case, you know, it won't make much of a difference because it is kind of bluish like the sky. But let's see if I throw in like a, like a sunset, which really doesn't make sense. But anyways... 
because you can clearly see it's middle of the day. But if I did sunset and I did the relight scene, then you'll see it affects the whole here shot. So, and oh, by the way, you can load in your own obviously uh, pictures here for the for the sky. So, I try one of just just those blue skies there. Now, in all of my sort of so far, when I kind of playing around with the software here, I find that like when you're doing things like this, like the sky replacement. It does a pretty damn good job, like when it comes to like basically cutting out all those, you know, the the, the edges, even here, like the ones that are out of focus. Uh, but in case it does sometimes ever, again, so far I haven't seen it kind of screw up. But if it does, you can go in here and you can edit the actual mask, like you can paint it yourself. Oh, and then uh, now one thing is, of course, like I was saying, my background here because I was shooting uh, wide open with the lens, so the background. You can see it's out of focus, but the clouds obviously aren't. So that's how you can do the sky defocus here. So somewhere there, I think. See, now right away it just blends in a lot better. It looks like it was actually taken. So, like, look at this quickly. Before and after. Like, look what a difference it makes. Adding those clouds and it just makes it look like, wow, right? Just, you know, with, the, again, just a few little clicks. Now, another cool here panel is this portrait thing. So you have things like the uh, AI uh, skin enhancer. So you can kind of zoom in here so you can see what it does. And you, you can, again, just slide this. And, you know, it does your kind of your typical smoothing. It does actually have shine removal, which is really good, like those little spots we'll take care of. And in here is not too much of that shine, but there are other photos I'm going to show you where that shine is there. And now Annie's, you know, like I said, her makeup or skin looked pretty good here in these photos. But if if, let's say, there was some stuff there that I would want to clean up, then again... If I put this thing, you can see it does a little bit of this, but like I kind of, in a way, I don't want to, you know, en enable the sk uh, skin defects removal because, like, she has this mole in there that is, you know, it's part of her feature, so I don't want that to be actually removed. So let's see here, move it like that. So again, before and after, and you can see, like, especially the shine removal. Look like that that shine on her nose, how it was before, and look how nice and smooth it is now. Um, so that that's the kind of cool thing about this. You can do, they have further other things. For example, you can light the face. So like in this case, it was actually pretty well lit there with the softbox. But in case, let's say the exposure on the face was too too little, you can actually brighten up the face. You can see like this. I actually don't want to do that. Eye enhancer, I think that kind of adds, yeah, this little clarity and little like makes the eyes just look a little bit sharper. Uh, the dark circles, again, you can see that removes that shadow slightly above her underneath her eye so again we'll do before now after you can slim the face which is <laughs> not something i usually do but see there you can see how it makes the face slimmer again before after but i think i'm just going to leave that thing so but you know you, you can do all that stuff improve eyebrows so like it in this case it might actually be better like she she had pretty good makeup but i think it looks nicer when it's a little bit darker maybe there Lip saturation, for example. Oh, yeah, that will add, like, extra color to the lips. Lip r redness. So you can make it, like, really red. Uh, in this case, I'm going to leave it. And teeth whitening, in case you have somebody with, like, really, really bad teeth. Which Annie doesn't have a problem with that. So, anyways, it's pretty cool already. And now the cool thing is that uh, instead of having to redo all this, including the, you know, like I said, rotoscoping, all that stuff, I can just save this as a, as a preset. So, I'm going to go here to my looks. And I'm going to save it as a new look. So I'm going to give it, I don't know, NYC times square one, my, my new look. So there, and then now I can go to my next photo. And you'll notice instead of me basically having to redo all those changes, like basically that I did in the, the other one, I can just, here, apply this look. And boom, <laughs> look, look how fast that is. It right away just you know applied those same effects all the same changes and because it knows again where Annie's face is or skin everything like it just you know takes all of that into account you know and it replaces the sky and it does it automatically like okay like before and on the other previous photo and then this one now so uh, here I'm gonna go before after you can see so really cool um, now this picture though uh, one thing I noticed is that we did actually get some two people there. Like you see in the previous picture, I didn't have any of these people. Now in these tools up here, for example, you have erase and clone and stamp. So erase just basically what it does is it 
looks at the areas around and tries to like duplicate that same texture. So you can try it, but in this kind of photo where there's a lot of these details, it's not like a one texture, might not always work best, but you know what? Let's just give it a try. Let's see if I can just erase the guy's legs here. Click erase and ah, oh, look, pretty, did a pretty good job there. So I'm gonna try to erase his head. Maybe this thing here. Go erase again. Oh wow, it's doing a pretty good job actually. <laughs> Uh, maybe this one here, we'll see. I don't know. This, I doubt it's going to do a good job, but I can give it a try. Yeah, it's a little confusing there, so I think that part it might be better if I go over the over it with the clone and stem tool. Uh, and then here, the same thing with this lady here that's sitting. Let's just try to erase that part first. There, actually, did a good job. So I'm going to click done here, and then I'm going to now just go over with the clone and stem tool. And kind of just touch it up. I will be doing some of this retouching. So yeah, now it's done. And again, we can just quickly compare it to before, after. So the people are gone and our color grading here and everything is done. So in here, I'm going to again apply that same look. And I could, by the way, just apply it to like all these photos if I wanted to. So if I go, for example, here, for example, I can go here. I can go to my adjustments, copy adjustments. And then I can go and pick all of these here and go paste adjustments. So in case you don't want to go one by one. And this one actually I might go here and further adjust here the portrait enha enhancer. I'll add a bit of more light to her face. Somewhere there you see makes it brighter. So again before, after. And the skin enhancer, I'm gonna increase it even more. There's some like these reflections that's just going to smooth it out better for me and of course if i wanted to i could adjust like overall like maybe i'll even adjust the temperature slightly increase the temperature and add a little bit of exposure here quick little touch up uh this photo here looks pretty good but i do think maybe adding a bit more light to her face might help it Again, I'm going to go to the face here, AI Portrait Enhancer, add a bit of more light. And again, before, after. I think it looks beautiful. And anyways, this is how all these photos now look. And as you can see, you know, I, I adjusted all of these photos here pretty damn quickly. And again, thanks to the AI. I can't say I'm a fan of AI and everything, like it's kind of creeping into all aspects of our life and... I don't really like that, but in every aspect of life, but when it comes to here photo retouching, man, it just makes my job so much easier. Makes it makes it go by faster too. Now in this photo, I um, uh, definitely want to add that sky. So I'm going to go here and add some kind of a more, maybe like a dramatic sky. because It's just too plain there. And you know, the whole thing has like so much texture and that sky just really needs to be more dramatic. So let's let's see. That one looks pretty good. Maybe something like this. These nice sort of just puffy clouds. Um, now let's see. Let's do the horizon position. So move it up. I think that might look better. Kind of you want to see the horizon somewhere there. So you want to see a bit of those kind of faraway clouds and then the other ones there. There's still some, you know, blue sky showing through. So again, this is before, after. It just right away makes that kind of, that really plain looking sky and it adds a nice texture. And especially since everything else in this photo has so much texture, that just I think it just makes it look nicer. Um, uh, let's do the AI Enhance. Let's see, somewhere there, I think. Sky Enhancer, maybe a little bit, maybe not as much. Somewhere there. Uh, structure, definitely want to add that. Kind of so we, you know, our brick, like uh, the, the stone here and then the, the leaves just kind of have a bit more of that kind of pop in it. So I think that's pretty good. I uh, just noticed there's some little garbage here, so that's going to be easy to do with the erase tool. Because again, it's just going to look at the textures all around here. So let's go here, this area and this area. Click erase. 
and beautiful. It's gone. And let's go here to the portrait. Let's see. I mean, she looks pretty good, but you know what? You can always put in some skin enhance and like basically skin enhancer here. Shine removal, because I know later on it was a pretty damn hot day, so there's some some like you'll see that the light kind of shining on her face. But yeah, that looks pretty good already. Again, before, after. Definitely takes up an already, you know, pretty good photo and it just makes it that much better. So, so let me just go and copy the settings pretty much to the, all these photos now. And anyways, this is the final product. This is uh, these are this is how the photos look. So I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, definitely, uh, I think Luminar Four is a really cool piece of software I'm going to be using. By the way, if you guys want to get the, this program, uh, if you want to get a, a nice discount and all that stuff, as always, follow the link in the description of the video. And if you want to find more, even more tutorials like the one that I did today, then as always, you can head on over to my website at tomantosfilms.com. And that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.